Hey, 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 welcome back to Talos of Tech live on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're talking about Apple's brand new product category they introduced to the world earlier this year. Still not the owner of one, but I found it a amazing product that was probably the best in its class. If you want to get a geo-tracking device and you're already in the Apple ecosystem, um, AirTags have an extensive Find My Network that you can pull from, which is great. However... Unfortunately, people seem to be abusing its power and abusing its accuracy of tracking things down because um, according to this report um, from 9to5Mac, there have been a series of uh, car thefts that are being used by people basically finding luxurious vehicles uh, that they know how to hack into. They know how to um, either, not really hotwire, but basically spoof the, the key fob with the proper infrared signal to unlock the car, and then there's this module that you dock to the dashboard and everything. But in order to track down that vehicle, you essentially, people are attaching air tags to them in inconspicuous places so that the owners don't notice it. And um, I think Apple's goal was to prevent this type of thing from being happening, pre preventing, you know, creepy people out there using air tags to stalk people with. Um, and by doing that, uh, the idea was if you had an iPhone with a more recent generation of iOS 15, which according to most reports, most iOS devices have updated. I think a 60% um, of iOS devices are now running iOS 15. Then you'll get a pop-up that says, hey, you're carrying an AirTag that's not yours with you, right? Because um, it was a bit of a compromise. You know, not everybody was happy about it. But Apple's logic was AirTags are for tracking items, not people, which meant... Um, if you got something stolen that had an air tag in it or on it, um, that the thief could potentially see that pop up and go, oh, hey, let me get rid of this air tag because I don't want the owner to track me down. But um, something Apple didn't quite address or think too much about was people using it in the inverse and like intentionally uh, attaching it to vehicles uh, to track people down with and... Maybe the owners of these vehicles don't have iPhones. Maybe they're not running the latest version of iOS or something. Or it's possible that they're at a certain point of the vehicle where it's not close enough to register with the iPhone for uh, a pop-up to say, hey, you're carrying someone else's AirTag with you. Because ideally, that's uh, what would happen. But now, um, it's not like an extremely common issue, but it, it's becoming more of just a one-time isolated instance. Like... AirTags aren't even a year old yet, and I believe there have been five, um, five to ten reported car thieves that have used AirTags in this manner. Um, I'm curious if Apple can like uh, flag those accounts. You know, if the if the police find out about who stole the vehicle and how they stole it, um, find that Apple ID and just kind of perma ban them. It's like, hey, you're using AirTags incorrectly, or you're abusing the AirTag. Find my network, so we're gonna penalize you for it. Uh, no more, no more find my network for that person. Um, it's just kind of an interesting uh, software challenge. I'm trying to think of ways they can go about that. One one thought process I had was um, maybe Apple could find a way to like um, if the AirTag gets away from its owner for too long, it starts pinging itself. You know, it starts chirping, it starts making a noise, and maybe if the the car owner uh, noticed that noise on the outside of their vehicle, then they would look around for it and try to identify the AirTag, but that chime could definitely make it harder to track down things that were stolen from you because someone steals something and they hear the chirping, they're going to be like, oh, someone's trying to find this item. So you're kind of danged if you do, danged if you don't with AirTags, right? Like the, the intention is good. I understand why they don't want them to be able to track people and they want the focus to be on items and it's not so much for stolen items, it's mainly just to help you find things you lose on accident. Um, and it's supposed to be easy to, you know, tag it to an iPhone and say, oh, here's the owner, let me know I found their keys or I found their phone or I found their headphones or what have you. It's kind of scary that they can be used this way, especially because AirTags, more so than Tile or or any other geotracking tag out there, they have so many devices that they can encryptedly ping um, so when you slap an air tag, you know, on, on some rich guy's car and you're going to track it down and steal it from him, there's so many Apple devices it can register and you have an extreme amount of accuracy to track that vehicle down um, that basically any malicious person can, can have access to this really effective tracking technology that's 30 bucks or 20 bucks if you buy a pack of four. Eh, it's scary. Yeah, it really is. Den Dedden says, I'm a bit late. How are people doing that? Basically, 
they go to parking lots or they go to luxurious events and that kind of thing, and they will attach an air tag to an expensive vehicle that only a rich person would have access to, and then um, they have the additional hardware um, to track that vehicle where it goes back to its uh, its house or whatever, and then um, bring along you know infrared equipment uh, infrared equipment to spoof the key fob. And then you can plug these electronics into the dashboard and basically hotwire it. So um, they're tracking down, you know, where the, where the owners of these rich vehicles are from. Um, I solved the problem by not letting people stick things to my things. Well, that ideally that would be nice if you could prevent that. But um, sometimes you're not always within watching distance of your car. Sometimes you go into a grocery store and you don't see. Uh, who's hanging around your car, or sometimes you go to a sit-down restaurant and you can't really see your car from inside. Um, it's tricky. My friend has one hidden in his truck somewhere. Well, it's good for tracking down the car, that kind of thing. Uh, Simon says, I have one hidden in my car. I find it quite funny that a thief could steal my car and their iPhone could give them away instantly. Yeah, it's a lot better if you're the owner of the AirTag. What was kicking off this story, Chris Norton's already asking, like, what are we talking about? What was kicking off this story is owners, people buying air tags specifically to drop into vehicles and then track those vehicles down. Um, that's where, unfortunately, it's proven to be fairly effective in that regard. This is one of those problems that existed before air tags, but Apple's popularity has shown a spotlight on how this could be abused. It's true. The, there were geo tracking devices before. Um, Apple air tags are not the first uh, uh, tag to be used to track down rich people's cars and that kind of thing. This could be done with prior technology. The difference is now um, the Find My Network, I think, is far more accurate. So thieves, if they are looking for some type of electronic to attach to vehicles they want to steal to target, um, they're probably going to be more inclined to buy air tags because the Find My Network is so strong and air tags are pretty dang affordable. Um, you know, you can buy a pack, I think, on, on Thing. They work really well. <laughs> they actually, they work shockingly well when it comes to tracking things down. Hello, Waveman Mike. Welcome. How could they attach the air tag to his car? Like tape it? Yeah, they use some kind of electrical tape. I The story did not detail how they do it, but I, I'm guessing they put it in some inconspicuous place underneath the car, um, in, a, in the tailpipe or something. I don't know exactly where they put it, but um, yeah, 9 to 5 Mac has been saying that. I heard that Apple is developing an air tag detector app on Android, but I don't know how many people would actually download that on Android. I bet if this continues to become an issue and more and more people start ab abusing the AirTag network, um, I honestly wouldn't be shocked if uh, Google agrees to just kind of bake this into Android. The problem is, even if you did, even if you did bake this feature for for the Find My Network and say, "Hey, let's alert any phone nearby, iPhone or Android, that hey, there's an AirTag that you're carrying with you and it's not registered to your name," um, even if they brought that to the latest version of Android, the majority of Android phones would not support it <laughs> for for probably years because the adoption rate of Android is so slow. Um, I haven't lost, <laughs> AirTags are awesome, I love mine, I haven't lost my keys since I bought them. I haven't lost my keys either, but I don't have an AirTag on. <laughs> um, let's see, wouldn't any iPhone user get notification about tracking? That's the intention, that's, that's what Apple wants it to do, but, um, the problem is, I guess they might be putting them in a point in the car where it's too far away from the iPhone to pick it up. You know, it's probably... That system probably works when you're trying to keep an AirTag, like, in someone's bag. If you, like, threw it in someone's backpack or their gym bag and you wanted to track them because you're a stalker. Um, if, if that's the problem, maybe the AirTag's closer to the iPhone and it can ping it. But if you're putting it at, like, the back end of the car and the owner's in the driver's seat, you know, you've got a fair amount of distance plus a bunch of metal preventing the signal from actually picking the iPhone. So that might, um, that, that might ruin it. Um, let's see. For the fourth year in a row, Ming-Chi Kuo has confirmed that Apple has delayed under-display Touch ID. Now it's totally confirmed for next year. I actually haven't seen a report recently suggesting Touch ID is coming next year. Uh, I've seen those in the past, but I haven't seen one recently. Can't these people just go to the rich neighborhood and do the same thing? I suppose they could, but the AirTag helps a lot more with precision, so you know exactly. Because 
at least as far as the thieves are concerned, there are certain cars that have specific vulnerabilities for hacking into and, and using specific hardware that's designed to get into them and start them, and certain rich cars that aren't capable of supporting that hardware. So if you're able to tag a rich car that is vulnerable to those compromises, you can track down exactly where that car is, whereas if you're just going door to door to random rich people's houses, you don't know if they have the exact car you're looking for. So it, it depends. Um, on the bright side, if they did add it to Android, more than likely a guy with a fancy car probably has one of the higher end Android devices. Yeah, that was my other thought press. I th my other thought process is that rich people are probably more inclined to own iPhones. But um, if it's not if it's not doing its job correctly, and the AirTag the AirTag is not notifying the owner. In these cases, there's been more than one or two uh, car thieves. Um, using the AirTag, it's not notifying whoever, whatever kind of phone they own. I don't know if these, that would be an interesting part of the inf in investigation. Are all the car owners that are getting stolen vehicles, are they all Android or are these uh, all iOS users and the AirTag's not notifying them the way it should? Um, if tag is too far for non-owner to detect it and other iPhones used to notify owner to tag, then how would the thief detect if non-owner can't? That's a good point. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe if it gets close enough to a certain device, but not the iPhone. I don't know. That's a good question. I know rich people who own it. I know rich people who own Android is more expensive than iOS. I'm sure there's both. I'm just saying in general, when it comes to smartphone sales, iPhone is dominant. If you're talking about, about phones that are over like $600, it's like 80% iOS. Android is bigger as a whole. Uh, in market share, but it's mostly because of mid-range and low-range smartphones. Um, what about camera inside the car that will catch culprits trying to tag your car? <laughs> well, that that's a closed box solution. It works on specific vehicles, but not the, the whole situation. This is why we can't have nice things. Yeah, Touch ID is coming back every year. I wonder if anyone would air tag my three-year-old Ford Fiesta. <laughs> I'd be curious. Now we got to look around for uh, air tags on all our cars. Um, let's see. Thoughts on Ludwig's transition to YouTube? I really hope YouTube YouTube rolls out a five dollar credit for us premium users to become channel members to compete with Twitch Prime, so YouTube makes more money off premium. I don't think they would make more money by having to pay us out more. Uh, <laughs> they'd probably make more money by keeping it the way they are. I accidentally started a battery day hype stream earlier. Yes, I. For those who don't know, channel members, people that have the green name, uh, they get exclusive access to behind the scenes live streams for this channel. So on Talos of Tech, I go live when I'm filming and editing my video and you can watch me make the video in real time. Um, and on accident, because I did a Talos of EV stream yesterday, I didn't change the key within OBS. So when I went live, I was trying to go live uh, for the edit for the behind the scenes live stream. And it turned out that um, uh, the key was still set to EV. So I went live on EV for a few seconds on accident. I don't know why it chose the battery day title and thumbnail. That was like the last default option it had to go off of. So that's what it chose. Um, but yeah, I quickly turned it off and deleted it and then switched the key over to the members only live stream. So it's two bucks a month. You get updates on the upcoming videos. It helps me afford all my crazy Apple addictions. <laughs> so that's why I went live on EV accidentally for a few seconds. Uh, do you think Apple will update the AirTags in the future with new sensors to detect if it's attached to a car? Maybe based on miles per hour, just like, like how Apple Watch has a ton of sensors. The problem is... Uh, how could you detect the difference between being attached to a car and just being along in someone's car? You know, like if you forgot your keys in an Uber and you left them in the Uber, um, the AirTag would likely detect that it's in a car and moving, um, but it's not necessarily being used to, you know, try to steal that car. It's just that's what it's in. So I'm not exactly sure how they can find a way to see if it's being used abusively to track down a vehicle versus it just was lost inside a vehicle. Um, cause you want, you want to be able to track it down if you leave it inside one. Um, I use my wife's car keys with tag and I get no alert. That's interesting. Maybe it's not doing its job the way it's supposed to. Um, do you think the cost of YouTube paying creators out more will matter when more viewers buy premium to get that one free channel membership? I feel like it balances out. I don't think most people will. I don't think the, the free channel membership is the primary reason someone would want to get premium. The main reason someone would get premium is to have ad-free YouTube. That's 
and the background play and stuff. That's by far more worth it to more people than the channel membership stuff is is cool for people who want to support directly, but I don't think most um, <laughs> most would pay for premium just for that. Uh, and I also don't know how profitable premium is. I'm not sure if YouTube loses money on that, depending on how many people are using it. Um, anyone can track the tag as soon as they leave the car or pass by it. I hope that's the case. It just sounds like it's not always working that way. Um, people use them to steal cars or keep them safe? Both. I'm sure there's people using air tags to, to keep their car safe. Not a bad idea if you're worried about someone running off with their car to just embed an air tag somewhere in there. Make it hard to find so that if someone does jump in your car and hotwire and drive it away, you know exactly where the car is. Um, and you just hope that the thief doesn't find the air tag or the thief doesn't have an iPhone running the latest version of iOS and they get pinged. Um, but yeah, if I guess the key there is to... You know what this is making me think about? Find My Network should start being embedded into vehicles. I mean, we probably have OnStar. There's certain vehicles, like I'm sure Teslas have GPS data baked into them so you can track them down if they're stolen. I don't even know how you would hotwire or steal one anyway. Um, but just building the Find My Network into the car so you know exactly where you parked and um, if it does, by some miracle, get stolen, um, you know where to find it. That might be a good backup. Um, yeah, use Tile as a backup in case they find the tag. When is Picture in Picture coming for the free version of YouTube? I thought it was supposed to be in October. I never heard, Josh, I, I never heard specifically they were planning on doing Picture in Picture for free. I thought that was supposed to be a premium feature. Hey, Viper's in the chat. Welcome. <laughs> How you doing? Um, let's see. Anyone here thinking about checking their cars to see if there's no air tag? My car is worthless, so I'm I'd be okay if someone came along and stole it. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to steal my car. Um, it'll be it'll be a burden for them to take it for themselves. <laughs> but yeah, if you've got an expensive car that you care about, you might want to look around, check for air tags. Um, Tile only tracks last location you had, not like Apple. I think Tile does the same thing, though. It, it, it looks for other Tile devices, and it'll ping that and let you know where the last registered Tile was. But the thing is, there's just ten times less Tiles than there are Apple registered devices within the Find My Network. So the AirTag's accuracy is just way, way better than Tiles is. My Tesla's definitely safe from theft. I think so. Teslas have so much tech and GPS and, and, you know, it's linked to your app, so you can you can see exactly where it is from the app, and you can limit the speed from the app. So it, I don't know how someone would steal it, but if they did, it would probably be pretty hard to get away with it. Um, you could also fla flag the VIN on Tesla's end, and um, you would likely be able to cut off supercharging um, from the vehicle. So the vehicle would be kind of useless if they did try to steal it. Mohammed Beg says, I only use my air tags for my car keys, and oftentimes I let people borrow my car. It doesn't mean I want to track my friends and family. <laughs> no, I don't think it does. I'd just be interested because I know the intention of air tags is that if you take one with you that's not yours, that you get this pop up. But at least from what we're hearing from these stories and what people are saying in the chat, it doesn't sound like a lot of people are getting that pop up when they're supposed to. Why isn't there Find My in CarPlay? Yeah, true. Well, CarPlay is usually powered by the iPhone when the iPhone's in Find My, but baking, like they've built Find My into headphones and they've even built it into like an e-bike. So if the bike gets lost or something, you can go back and find it. Although I think bikes are more likely to be stolen, but it's funny because Apple's still like, no, don't, don't use AirTags to find stolen things. It's just if you lost it, but then why, why bake it into the bike? How many people just, like, f misplace their bike and forget where it is? <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's see. Picture-in-picture picture for YouTube will be coming soon. You're not allowed to monetize iOS functions, so that's why it's in beta to premium use members. But only only thing you have to do to get in beta is, like, tap one button. <laughs> I guess they're not allowed to monetize iOS functions, but uh, they, mo they monetized iOS functions. <laughs> they're doing it. Um, when my wife takes my car keys, it does notify her phone. Well, I'm glad it does it sometimes, but, um, this is why you drive an older but reliable vehicle. That's the problem. Older is becoming less and less reliable. All my friends with old cars had kept getting more and more issues with them. I, I'm sorry. I'm not in that camp of person that's like, yeah, that old car just, it, you know, it works so well. It's like, oh, 
I had several friends with cars that were, you know, 20, 30 years old, and none of them were driving them anymore because they kept breaking and they kept trying to repair them and then something else would break. So they borrow other people's cars and it's like, yeah, I wish I could say Old Faithful. It's like, yeah, it's it's reliable until it's not reliable, but gave my keys with Apple Tag, saw a repair person driving it without asking. He started having to go to the Porsche dealership for programming, keeps people honest. Okay. Keeping people honest is good. Uh, is background play only on premium? Currently, I have YouTube minimized as a square while I use other apps without premium, unless it's different. I've had premium for so long, I don't exactly know how it works without it. <laughs> Basically, I, I signed up for premium, the family plan of premium, like the day it launched. It was called YouTube Red back then, but I always wanted that. I was advocating it for years because I watched way more YouTube than anything else. And I was like, please have an ad-free option. I'm so sick of the ads. I, I'm so tired. Yes, I will pay money. And as soon as they launched it, I was like, yep, done. So I, as long as they've had an ad-free option, I've been paying for it. Um, let's see. My friend still uses a 2003 Toyota Corolla and it's still running like a champ. I guess I didn't consider 2003 that old. I was referring, like, one of my friend's cars is from the uh, early 90s. Um, and it was working fine until recently. Now it's acting up on him. And then my other friend used to have a Mercedes from the 70s. And it was okay, but then he needed a jump start all the time and it stopped working. So he eventually sold it because it was sold it for scrap because it just kept falling apart on him. Um, 2003, I guess, is getting there. Um, but yeah, I want to be able to add my family's air tags to my device to find them and not get notified when I use their cars or something else. That's true. Better uh, smart sharing for air tags when other people are taking the car or using the keys for something would be would be a good idea. Um, YouTube is essentially scamming us by making YouTube premium without ads. I just use ad blocker mainly. <laughs> well, I'd say the ad blocker is more of a scam because that's how you take people's content without supporting them. So I don't think it's a scam because, you know, it's not free to host all of this content. It's not free to distribute all this content and all of the content creators you're watching are spending money on equipments and there's in content production takes time and, they want to support themselves, so if you use Adblock, you're not supporting them. I would consider that more of a scam than YouTube Premium, which is helping YouTube out. They're like, we'll get rid of the annoying ads if you're willing to help pay for the operating costs of this platform. YouTube is not this giant free server that no one has to pay for, like all of the electricity and the server space. YouTube's taking terabytes and terabytes of footage every hour and hosting it so that anyone in the world can watch it for free. Um, that's not easy to do. That's why there's not that many other sites competing with YouTube um, very effectively, at least. Um, Tesla's the most reliable. The issue they have are silly things like panel gaps. Hopefully Giga Texas gets rid of that, but yeah. Um, the average age of the car on American roads is 12 years old, so a 2003 car is technically old if you ask me. I get, but you're kind of factoring in a bunch of people buying brand new cars, but yeah, I would say... 12, 12 to 20 years is when the car starts having more issues to where you get to the point of it not being worth fixing. Um, my dad's still rocking his 01 Camry and has a Cybertruck in order. Well, there you go. He's got a new one lined up. <laughs> um, time to go back to tiles, I suppose. No, <laughs> the problem isn't air tags themselves. It's how people are using the air tags. Um, you could probably... You could go back to using tiles, but that doesn't mean your car's not at any... Air tags exist, you know? Switching back to tiles won't change the fact that air tags can be abused. Um, they should just open up Find My to Android and everyone else. It'll make the network even better. Um, third parties can take advantage of the Find My network. So if Android phone... I think it's more hardware related than software. Um, you have to have probably a certain standard of chip um, technology that you can incorporate in your devices. But like if, if Google felt like making the pixel compatible with the find my network, they could probably do it. Um, it's, it's kind of up to Google to a certain extent. Um, I don't support people who use ad block. I, I think a lot of people don't quite understand how ad block works, but yes, ads are annoying. Don't get me wrong. I don't like advertisements, um, but they are a necessary evil to keep people um, making the content you enjoy. So all the content creators you're watching are able to support themselves um, because of the ad revenue that Google pays them. 
And when people use ad block, they take away the ad revenue. Um, so whether or not it's legal or illegal, people get hung up on is like, well, technically I'm allowed to use it. It's like, okay, yeah, you, you, you can get away with it, but it's not, um, it's, if everyone did it, basically all the creators you watch wouldn't be making these videos. So couldn't we just Venmo you to support it? Does Google get mad that they don't keep one third? You could, but that would complicate my taxes far further. And also not everyone's going to do that. Whereas just by default, having ads on all the videos, that's, that's a much uh, easier way um, to monetize content and to make it free instead of telling everyone you have to support me. And at every video being like, Venmo me, please, Venmo me, please, Venmo me, please. No, you can just, you can just watch me and I, and YouTube takes care of the rest. What about people using premium? I get a cut of what you pay for premium. So YouTube reimburses me part of the, what they make from the YouTube premium subscription. So if you don't like ads and you want to support the creators you're watching, um, YouTube premium is the best way to do it because I actually get paid more per minute watched um, from premium users um, than I do uh, people watching ad free. So if everybody had YouTube premium, all content creators would make far more um, and there wouldn't be any ads. If everyone used ad block, all your YouTubers would have to retire and find different jobs. So that's what <laughs> that's what frustrates me about people using ad block. Um, if ads worked, you and every other creator wouldn't have to push every single other monetization platform, or are you all just greedy? <laughs> no, we're all just greedy. Um, no, like ads do work. Um, you notice in my videos, I don't say sponsored by such and such or sponsored by this or that. Uh, I actually do my best to kind of minimize how many forms of monetization I ask for, but content creators are going to push what they can get away with. So if if viewers are comfortable and they don't mind channels plugging sponsors or trying other different um, monetization practices, then uh, they'll keep doing it. If it gets to the point where it's overbearing and people stop watching, then they'd stop doing it. But you guys know Linus Tech Tips and Marquez's last video was sponsored by the Cash App. So um, ads help, but I guarantee you the sponsorships... And the, the merch plugging would be infinitely worse if the ads weren't there at all. If we just got rid of the, the ad sense, that's still, even, even with sponsors, even with um, donations, even with merch sales, ad revenue is still a substantial part. It's, it's probably at least 50% on most of the channels you guys watch. Um, likely more, depending on who you're watching. So if you take away 50 to 70% of the revenue... Um, yeah, they're going to have to do way more sponsored content to the point where it might be unwatchable and you don't even want to bother anymore. Um, would, you, would I ever do sponsors? I try not to. If I can get by without doing them, I will, just because I get tired and I get annoyed. You know, I don't like ads. That's why I pay for premium. And I watch content creators, and then there's even more sponsor. There's more ads, and I'm paying to get rid of the ads. So I get why they do it. They've got expenses. They've got employees. They've got overhead that they got to pay for. So I, I understand why they're doing it, but I, I've always just been on the camp of if it's possible for a content creator to make the content they like and make the videos they want and... Um, not use sponsors, then great. I'll appreciate that very, very much. Uh, I, um, so I'm, my focus is trying to make the content I want to see. I would like to see more sponsor free content. So that's what I do. Um, so yeah, that's like, if I, if I was like, I have to do a sponsored ad deal or I will go homeless and I will have to find another job, then sure. I guess I would do sponsors, but I haven't reached that point. Um, We've done sponsors for the tech podcast, yes, but that's because I'm I'm only receiving one third of the revenue. That the tech podcast is supporting Randy and Nick. Um, we actually haven't done any sponsorships recently because we just haven't needed to. Um, the built-in ads that Spreaker puts uh, in the podcasts have have been paying decent enough as is, and Nick has a much larger f uh, source of income from NASA spaceflight now, um, so it's not as big a priority anymore, but. Back when Randy and Nick were trying to turn the podcast into their livelihood, they were trying to see, like, okay, can we do an ad read here and there? And they they do far more of the work for the podcast than I do. So if they were in favor of doing sponsors, I said, yeah, go for it. That's fine. But um, the tech channel is all me. I, I get all the revenue for this. I get requests for sponsorships all the time. Absolutely. Um, I just don't answer I support using ad block. I just hate ads that much. I rather know YouTubers with no ads or pay to watch platform. Yeah. 
It's just, it's the same, lo to me, it's the exact same logic of saying 7-Eleven has billions of dollars, so I'm going to steal stuff from the store. It's like, if everyone did that, they would go out of business, but your logic is, well, everyone else can pay, but I don't really feel like it, so I'm not going to. It's like, you can probably get away with it, you know, if you, if you grab the Snickers bar or you grab the snack and you slip it in your pocket and walk out at checkout. They'll be like, they're fine. The employee's still getting paid. 7-Eleven still has plenty of money, but you're, you're still doing it. Doesn't make it right, in my view. Mike says, I feel like advertisers at time really take advantage of the viewers having ads that are longer than two minutes. I know it has a skip button, but some of these are 15 minutes long and that seems crazy. Yeah, that's part of the reason I've tried to avoid doing sponsorships as much as possible is just because I think it gives uh, the advertisers more control and I would rather my viewers have more control. So I'm okay if there's people out there that want to support me more directly. Um, as long as it builds relation as long as it builds the relationship with my community closer. Like we have we have the channel members here supporting me for two bucks a month and they get a bit more extra content. They get updates on upcoming videos and they get the badges and the emojis and whatnot. I don't expect everyone to do that, but for the people who are willing to do it, we get to know each other a little better. So we have the exclusive live streams and those are a bit smaller and and more personal. So it builds the relationship between me and my community, which is what, in my opinion, the most fun part of my job is. It's not, I don't love editing that much. I really don't like filming that much. What I really love is just engaging if it brings content creators having control. Sorry for the lag. Uh, content creators should have control over how they want to run their business. I'm not against them doing that. But when you start devoting more of your video to ad space for other channels, you're building your relationship with the brand. You're building your relationship with another company. And now if they start paying for more and more of your livelihood, they're paying for your employees, they're paying for your rent, they're paying for your overhead for your business, you get to the point where you grow your, your expenses and you grow how many people you're working with and now you have to use the sponsors. Now if you don't do sponsorships, you're not going to be able to afford what you want to do. So that puts the business at this really, really... Um, competitive advantage where they can say, hey, we actually want you to put the ad at the beginning of the video now. And you could say, ah, people don't like the ad at the beginning. I always want to do it at the end. And they'll go, well, we'll take our money elsewhere and we'll support another creator that will put the ad at the beginning. And then, then they're like, well, I don't want to miss out on the money because I need to pay my bills. I have this staff and I have this building I need to pay for. So I guess I'll put the ad at the beginning now they have a really, really competitive bargaining chip. So if you build that relationship with the company and the brand, they can kind of influence how you build your content and influence what you say. Uh, because at a certain point, they'll be like, well, we'll offer you more money if you sign this contract and agree to this and this and that, and you have to say it this way. And you'll be like, well, if I had that extra money, then I could use it on this equipment and make my... Con so, you know, you're just building and building upon... Um, that relationship and I'm not in favor of building better relationships with brands as you guys have seen with my opinion on Google and Apple I I complain about everybody quite a bit <laughs> I don't want to build my relationship with brands because the money is nice but I don't think more of it is necessarily going to make me happy but uh, I've found a lot of joy and a lot of happiness from just meeting new people online and engaging with you guys um, I know what my people think about sponsors if I if I run a poll I'm sure it'll be like 60 to 80%. Yeah, you can do sponsors every once in a while. And there will be a bunch of comments that say, well, Drew, just do sponsors at the end of the video or, or just put a timer. That, that's going to add to the process of making my videos, which means I'm not going to be able to post them as quickly. I'm going to have to submit them to the company to watch them first. And a lot of people think that that's easy. A lot of people are like, well, just make sure the ads are at the end. Sometimes the brands don't let you do that. Sometimes they will for a year. And then after a year, they're like, eh, we want you to say this the sponsor in the first 15 seconds. Actually, now we want it to take up the first 30 seconds. Now we want you to add this to it. Um, so I just don't want to become dependent on that revenue. Um, so there's, I'm sure there's a good way to balance it. It's just, I don't, I really don't need it. It's not that important to me. And um, even, if, even if the poll was like 95% of people are fine with sponsors, I don't like it, and I don't want to be making content that I don't want to watch. So that's why I'm not going to do it. Um, that Mint Mobile video you upload could have been sponsored. For me, those are the vids I want to create and work with businesses that I'm already excited about. You're welcome to do that. 
Um, Mint Mobile wanted to sponsor me. They, they came out with a contract and they were like, can we do this thing where you'll get paid depending on how many people sign up? And I was like, I think I don't want people's recommendation. Um, I, I don't want my recommendation to be influenced by monetary gain. So I, I feel like if someone has something to gain from you using a service, they will tell you and have a, and have a slightly uh, tinkered perspective of the service. Um, than someone who doesn't have anything really to gain from it. Now, I, I'm okay with referral codes because that's just letting someone know, hey, the referral code benefits the end user and it just lets Mint know, you know, hey, I sent them this way. But that's very different from like direct cash because the referral code, I don't get direct cash from that. Um, it basically just gives people a discount. So I'm like, well, if they're going to Mint, I might as well give them a discount. But I, I don't get... I don't get paid every time someone signs up with Mint. Um, so if I if I cared more about money or I thought my content could be substantially better if I had more money to spend on it, then I would, but I don't think it would. Um, let's see. Sponsors are between content creators and the advertisers. Premium won't stop that. I just fast forward. Not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal, but I do think there's a point. I do think there's a certain amount of balance. You know, I'm not going to unsubscribe from Marquez just because he had a, a sponsored video, obviously. I, there's lots of content cre It's actually becoming increasingly difficult to find any content creator that's not having sponsors everywhere. But um, if you get to a channel that starts doing it routinely and over the top, it just it just starts getting worse and worse and worse, which I've watched. You know, there, there were channels I used to watch, but now they've been so overtaken by the sponsors, I feel like I'm constantly having to skip through more and more of the video, and I'm trying to find the point where the sponsor ends all the time. And it gets it gets a little too far to the point where I'm like, okay, I can't even watch this anymore. There's just way too many. Um, so there's a right way to do it, I'm sure. But um, if all I've said is, like, if it's possible to do it without, why wouldn't you? You know, if, if you can get by without it, sure, get by. If you want more money because you think that'll make you happier, that you think that'll make your channel better, then okay, go for it. But that's not that's not the place I'm in right now. I, I think the, the primary, like, meat, the, the substance of my videos is what I have to say and how I can say it. And I don't think a, a, a better camera or a bigger office or you know, having dedicated people to do more precise animations, whatever you want to call it. I don't think that will make my content that much better to the point that I'm willing to fill my videos with things I don't want to talk about that I'm not interested in. Um, there's a lot of channels like that now, and I don't blame them. I get it, you know? If, if you live in a high cost of living area or if you have a certain high overhead for your business... And you're like, I can't do this full time unless I do sponsors. And if I do sponsors, maybe I can do it full time. That's that's tempting. I totally get that. I, I understand why people would want to do it. It's just I respect their decision and I respectfully choose not to do that because I don't want I don't like the look of it. Um I think your videos are good without sponsors. Thanks, James. Appreciate your approach. You're the only channel that I'm willing to pay for the membership. Well, thank you, Marnjill. Um, what would you think of a back screen on an iPhone next to the camera to make much better selfies? Would it be better for a flipping phone over the brick style iPhone? I don't think many people would use it. It would probably add to the overall cost. It would make it much harder to repair. Um, not that Apple cares, but yeah, I just, I think most people would still rather use the bigger screen on the front. You know, the front facing camera isn't really that bad. The rear facing camera is better, sure, but... I think the the approach I would say to most people, if you want to use the rear facing camera for pictures, just use the just use your Apple Watch. You can bring out the remote and then get a view of it, and then tap it with your nose. And gives it yourself a countdown, and then smile. That's that's my approach to it. But um, yeah. let's see. It's also a bit dishonest if they don't really like the brand. Yeah, not most creators I watch don't do that, but. I have seen a lot of creators, I'm not naming names, I have seen creators recommend things that they clearly don't use, that they took a paycheck for to recommend, and that always, like, it kind of widens the gap between the, the community and the creator, right? It, it closes the gap between the brand and the creator, and when they do that, I, I kind of lose a lot of, of interest, but there's more channels, I'd like to think there's more channels out there that will recommend things they actually believe in. That's good. That's fine. That's better for sure. But I still think 
if if you have something to financially gain from someone using that service or you or you signed a contract to recommend that service yeah the opinion's a little bit different i think people would look at my channel much much more differently if they knew i was paid by apple right like if i'm talking about how great the iphone is and how much i love my macbook and how much i love my ipad if i was bragging about how great apple was and you knew i was being paid by them people would be like yeah okay okay he's a puppet he'll he'll do whatever he needs to do but if you know I'm not getting paid by Apple and I'm having to spend all of my own money on these products and I'm not getting any discounts, that makes it feel a bit more genuine. If someone recommends something and they spent, you know, thousands of dollars on it, then you go, oh, okay, okay, that's fair. Um, and, I, and same thing with Google, any, any brand really. But Apple's the most common one I talk about, so that's why I use it as an example. Um, Let's see. I'm outside putting up Christmas lights right now. Do you guys have any? <laughs> we haven't. My wife just got her um, wisdom teeth removed, and unfortunately, it did not go very well. It, uh, they didn't heal properly, so she has really, really bad dry socket. So she's been in a lot of pain, and I'm just trying to take care of her when I'm free. Um, you know, how did a freaking bug get in here? What the heck? I got it. Death on a stream. <laughs> Are you happy? Yeah, I'd like to say I am. I mean, there's there's struggles in life and there's there's bad things that happen. But I I I know this is a controversial opinion, but I I like to think of happiness as a choice. I like to think of it as something that you can choose to a state of emotion you can choose to be in, um, even when circumstances are bad. I don't you know it's it's easier to be happy when things are good, and it's much much harder to be happy when things are bad. But I I think for the most part, you can choose to be happy, even even in tough circumstances. So I'd like to think of myself as choosing to be happy, even when it's not easy to. Um, I love when channels use the sponsored product in a video, like Luke Miani with iFixit. Yeah, that probably works better. There's a, there's a good way of integrating it, sure. A sponsor here and there will help you close to that Model Y faster. <laughs> no one's close to the Model Y now, um, but we're, we're doing fine. Uh, it's, I've, I've seen the offers that sponsors offer there. Honestly, it's not, it's not that great. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen the emails. They, they, they're in my inbox all the time offering me, uh, deals for such and such. And eh, it would not get me that much closer. Wow. Thank you, Ben, for your continued support. Do you think the 27 inch iMac will be under 2000? Not likely to be on. Come on, dishy. Stop lagging. Sorry. I'm wondering more and more if uh, the 24-inch iMac is meant to replace, like, the entry-level iMac and the iMac Pro is meant to go for this higher-end market, you know, because I haven't seen a lot of concrete evidence that this is the case, but there seems to be several people assuming that the new iMac Pro will have dual M1 Max chips. I don't know if they have sources or if they know somebody I don't, but there, there seems to be enough people. And I'm like, that's not an unreasonable prediction because... The iMac Pro can pull much more power from the wall than, than the MacBook, and you don't have the battery life to worry about. So why not double up on the chips? You know, maybe the iMac Pro default comes with the M1 Max, and then there's an option to get two M1 Maxes put, partnered together and for even faster. But the cheapest M1 Max machine you can buy right now is like $3,000. So the idea that the iMac Pro would like have that by default, but then also be under 2000 I don't think so. I, I think best case scenario, iMac Pro starts at 2K. I think that's that, that would be impressive because it's rumored to have 120 hertz mini LED on a big screen, um, likely, you know, the updated design and whatnot, probably still have a chin, but um, I especially just with the SSD options, probably starting around 512 gigs and the, the MacBook Pros got more expensive, this is the first time the transition to Apple Silicon it resulted in an increase in price. Um, so now that we've seen that, I think it's fairly likely that if they do an all-out crazy iMac Pro, it might definitely... I think the current 27-inch iMac starts at $1,800 or something like that. And that's a very old, very, very old all-in-one design that they've had around for years. So if they're changing all of the chassis and everything and switching to... Um, switching to a flat back and they're 
changing up the I.O. and they're changing up the thermals and everything. I wouldn't be shocked if it started at 2000. Um, someone has clinical depression and just can't control their thoughts sometimes. That's fair. If there's a clinical issue, that's that's much, much harder to choose happiness for sure. Um, you are correct with happiness. I focus on remaining joyful despite my health issues. Well, that's good. Trying to remain optimistic, I think, is, is a good thing. Obviously, you, you can only do so much if you've got clinical depression, but... The Tesla phone won't happen. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't, is this becoming a meme? It's like the next air power. I don't know why anyone believes the Tesla phone is real. There is no anybody from any reputable source claiming it makes no sense. Elon has time and time again said phones are yesterday's tech. It's a declining market. There's less and less smartphones being sold. Um, it has nothing to do with Tesla's mission statement. Um, it's a... It's an already oversaturated market that's in decline. Why the heck would Tesla feel the need to enter it? I have no clue. Doesn't exist. There's no point. There's no reason. I might have to do a whole video if people keep asking about it. Um, Apple Car, how much? Probably a hundred grand. Uh, would you take early access products, X early iPhone or an early EV? First look. As long as I don't have to sign a contract, sure. If if. I've, I've said that before, you know, there's all these channels that get on Apple's nice list where they're allowed to have things early. And if the only thing in the contract is like, you just can't release your thoughts on it until this time, uh, I, I could probably abide by that. That's probably the only contract I'd be willing to sign for work is just, okay, I'll agree to not talk about it. But if the contract goes into, you can't talk about this, you can talk about this, um, just don't highlight this or, you know, we, you know, you void the contract. I don't want anybody controlling what I have to say. Um, if they, if they're just trying to control when I say it, okay, I could probably live with that because yeah, it would be a lot, lot nicer if I could get a hold of products before they're officially launched and cover them for you guys ahead of time. And I'm gel, I'm super duper jealous. <laughs> People act like that's a mystery. You're just jealous of those channels that get, uh, heck yeah. If I could get the new MacBooks early, I could start editing videos faster before everybody else. Yeah, of course. Of course I want to get stuff early. That would be awesome. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to take stuff early? And if the only thing I got to sign is just, okay, save all your thoughts until this time. I'd probably sign that. But if it was if it was like, you can't mention these things, you can't complain about this, then I'd be like, okay, I'll just wait. I, I don't want to. I don't want to be your puppet. I'm not interested in saying what I have to say. Yeah. Um, I, I'd rather just keep my honest opinions. If I don't like something, I want to be able to say I don't like something without fear of a contract being breached and that kind of thing. Um, wish me luck on this exam. Good luck, John Demos. He's he's watching YouTube before he takes his exam. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of... I think there's a bunch of desperate YouTube channels out there that are claiming... So if Video Awesome, if you were asking me to do a stream about the Tesla phone, the, the only thing I might do is a stream about why the Tesla phone doesn't exist and it never will. Um, as someone who still drives a manual, the idea of a fully autonomous Apple car disturbs my soul. <laughs> yeah, those are a dying breed, huh? There's less and less of those. Um, I don't think a fully autonomous Apple car is going to come out um, this decade or really ever <laughs> in order. I think I personally think Tesla is going to be the first two full self-driving vehicles, but I don't think they're near future. I think we're easily nine, eight years away from that. Um, are you taking on anyone else? Like you took on Nick. I know you love making new channels and my friend loves the news and the audience has asked for Talos of politics. So maybe you can work something out. <laughs> I, the reason I don't like talking about politics online is because it's, it's kind of the opposite of the tech community in that just like all the news is bad. It's pretty much, it just gets worse and worse and it doesn't improve. And the internet is a terrible place for talking about tough subjects. And that's mostly what politics are. Is it just a bunch of controversial, heated discussions that people get really, really opinionated about. And I don't really feel like uh, jumping on that bandwagon because <laughs> it's probably not going to end well. Um, and I, pol talking about politics usually is not fun. It's usually just kind of depressing and you're just kind of like, yep, I guess we're all screwed. So it's, it just ends up with a bunch of people complaining about the other group of people. Um, I don't know how fully autonomous cars maneuver on fully snowed over roads with the lanes completely covered. 
the same way a person does it. That's that's essentially uh, how Teslas are are being designed. They're monitoring and trying to drive as good as the best drivers and ignore all of the mistakes. So when the car makes a mistake, you throw that out of the software, and when the car does something right, you keep that in the software, and it's using vision and neural net training, which is how we drive cars. We use our eyes, and we train with our brains. So through artificial intelligence, analyzing what is a successful drive and what is not a successful drive, you can train a computer basically to learn, here's how you drive safely and effectively, and then ignore the bad stuff. So if a human can drive it, uh, the idea is a computer will eventually be able to drive it, given it has years and years of neural net training and that uh, Dojo supercomputer is able to analyze all the footage um, much, much faster and roll out updates much more quicker. So it's going to take a while. It's not going to happen overnight, but um, theoretically, the, the car basically has similar or better hardware than the human does. Um, people get opinionated about tech a bit too much and arguably makes less sense than political arguments. <laughs> yeah. I can understand why people get really opinionated and heated about political arguments because they're usually very big decisions and, and laws or, or ways of looking at life that can impact a great number of people. So I get that amount of heated argument. Um, tech, less so. I mean, there are certain things we can argue, whether it be, you know, right to repair or, or e-waste, you know, certain things that can have bigger impacts. But for the most part, people arguing about whether, you know, the iOS app store versus uh, the Google Play Store is a better place for apps and third parties. And, you know, <laughs> that argument doesn't matter as much in the grand scheme of, you know, wh what what cameras should we put on a phone or what what displays should we use or what's the refresh rate. The reason I'm a big fan of tech is it's usually an argument about what company is doing something better. So it's like this company does exactly what I want and I like that and this company does more of what I want and that's why I like that and it fits better for my workflow. So it's just this constant competition of who can make the better product and who can make the better service and what can be the most enjoyable, which to me involves a lot of joy. A lot of happiness is involved with, okay, my product is getting better. There's there's more I can do now. There's more that wasn't possible before. So it's just a lot of exciting development and, and sure, we get disappointed or annoyed that Apple doesn't do certain things, but people aren't going to get as opinionated or as heated about whether the iPhone has USB-C or not as they are pretty much any political subject. That's that's far more of a big deal. Um, let's see. Do you think robots should rule humans? Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, the go-to answer is no, but then you think about how bad humans can be at ruling humans. Like, well, what would be the better outcome. I guess it depends on how well intended the robot is. Maybe if the robot is super well intended, it might be better at ruling over humans than humans are. But if the robot's evil, it could be much worse than humans. So I don't know. That's a tough one. That's quick. Yeah. Ultron moment. <laughs> they already got Bluetooth that connects your phone, connects to the car. So no need for dedicated phone. Yeah, that's true. Um, Okay, no more asking about the Tesla phone. That's good. Thoughts about the Tesla bot? It's very interesting. I don't think uh, most people understand what the purpose of the Tesla bot was, but it's the reason I don't talk about it too much is because it's kind of way out there. Um, it's it's not something coming out next year or the year after that or the year after that. This is probably not going to be in, in any type of mass producible scale for, for another decade or so, but... Um, the concept is very, very interesting because the reason there's been um, there's been humanoid robots before, of course. There's been lots of different attempts at, at companies making humanoid robots, but the reason they talked about them at AI Day and the reason Tesla's thinking that they're more relevant now is because of how good neural net training computers are getting. So basically a lot of these computers with cameras and, and neural net chips inside them are being used to analyze a, a certain way of human behavior, in this case, self-driving, that's what they're training right now, and trying to take the best of the best and repeat that scalably. So take the best drivers, learn from them, and uh, throw out the mistakes and realize when the algorithm does something wrong and not to repeat that mistake and instead just keep doing the right thing over and over. If you apply that same type of neural net training to other things, 
outside of driving, now you start applying it to manual labor jobs, whether it be at the fast food industry, whether it be roofing companies, whether it be ditch digging or road paving. And if you start applying that to a humanoid form factor, you could you could theoretically start building robots that are very, very good at replacing jobs that are dangerous or boring or repetitive. Um, but this very quickly divulges into a political subject because then people are like, well, what's going to happen to all the jobs? And that makes a problem. But uh, just from a technical level, it's very impressive that uh, they're thinking about these kinds of things. And I think it's a good thing to think about because if you get to the point where you're able to analyze human behavior and repeat it, uh, sustainably and scalability and is that a word scalably <laughs> I don't think it is but just if you think about the the applications involved with that it, it actually does start to become kind of mind-boggling with how much you could achieve so um, they're probably getting a little bit ahead of themselves but I understand why they unveiled it so early because uh, they basically want more people in the AI field and they want more software engineers um, moving forward uh, into the Tesla software team. Basically, they want to recruit more people um, because they're saying, we're doing more than making self-driving cars. Like, we want to do more than just that. Um, so please come work for us, come help us. Um, so it, it was a recruitment tactic more than anything. Um, Applebot would be a very interesting path Apple could take. <laughs> oh, the memes write themselves. How the Applebot charges. You know, the Applebot... Um, doesn't have a calculator app. <laughs> Apple bot still uses lightning. Oh man, there's so many memes. Autonomous driving or pretend or simulated manual EV with a clutch. I would take the fake manual EV. Would you? I don't like, I've never liked manuals. I've tried to drive a car with a manual. It was awful. I understand why they're dying off. <laughs> it's, it's like, I would like to drive with two limbs, not four, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in self-driving stuff because... I would much rather the car drive itself and I can just sit back and relax and use my phone or live stream or edit videos or watch a movie or do whatever I want and the car does all the driving. That's that's what I'm excited for, assuming it can be done safely and reliably. Um, that's that's why I'm interested in Tesla and stuff, but I've, I have no interest in ever owning a car with a manual, even a fake manual I wouldn't, I wouldn't care about. <laughs> manual will then be referred to as driving with the steering wheel <laughs> i'm switching to manual that's how it works uh the tesla bot has the potential to be tesla's most important product and the most important product of any type in all of history if it goes the way they're planning yes but a lot of things tesla plans on doing take much longer and end up being far more complicated than they thought but um only four percent of americans drive cars with manual transmissions really is it down to four percent wow I didn't realize it had gotten that low. Um, I knew the car sales of manuals had dropped in significantly. There, there's more EVs sold than there are manual vehicles sold. I think it is dipping below like 2% of all vehicles now. Um, it's just extra work. And it and it and some people like that feel, but I, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely not one of them. Um, I'd be interested to give a fake standard EV a try. I don't know if I'd want to own one, though. <laughs> That's a funny term. A fake standard EV. Um, let's see. Apple train and bus. They kind of... If they do, like, closed-course autonomous vehicles that just drive around the Apple campus, that's that's kind of... It's a train without rails, you know? It has a pre-mapped route that it sticks to, and it stops and lets people get on and off. In a way, that's kind of a train. Um, yeah, the main issue with full FSD is those one-off situations. Well, yeah, that's what they're working on is all the edge cases. I've seen a video of a drift car manual that was changed to an EV. It was nuts. <laughs> so Model 3 driver is still like driving a manual car every now and then. There's just something satisfying about having full control over the car. And I'm sure there's something satisfying about riding horses. That doesn't mean that's continued use of transportation. Yeah, it, it just kind of turns into the same thing as like go-karts and you know, things you drive for fun, but not for, um, not for general transport. Um, manual cars are the main cars in the UK. Really? I'd be, I'd be shocked if that's most of them. But again, car ownership's probably lower there. 
Now we're well, now we're divulging into car subjects. How did we get so far? Oh, we've come full circle. Manual cars will be easier to steal with air tags. <laughs> we've come back to our original subject. Um, probably just because they don't have GPS tech in them. But I, I do actually think it would be a good idea for Apple if if car companies out there are going to support uh, CarPlay. Why don't you throw in the Find My Network while you're at it, so it's easy to track that car down if it gets stolen or hot wired or whatever. Um, most in the UK are manual. Weird. Um, I I have driven. My friend in high school had a manual, and he let me drive it a couple times, and I I hated it. It was awful. <laughs> it's like there's just a bunch of extra work for me to do that I don't normally have to do. Thanks. <laughs> That's great. No, thank you. There's a new app Apple's working on. Find my car. <laughs> um, iPad with a volume knob on the bottom middle of the screen. Hot tip. What? On the screen? Are you talking about the Mach-E thing? Manual cars are harder to steal in America because most thieves can't steal a manual car. Well, that's easy. I can also just drive a crappy car and no one will steal that <laughs> you know i had an uncle who owned a really really old car that uh d the car locks don't work but it's such an old like you know beat up car with all the issues with it he's like no one's ever tried to steal it it just kind of considers the inside free game so you know don't leave any change or anything valuable inside the car <laughs> but yeah there's, there's people if you just drive undesirable cars yes they're they probably won't be stolen um as long as you can't drive away with it um just take the key out. Uh, yeah, dude, where's my car? It's it's much harder to steal cars no one wants. Yeah, <laughs> Well, maybe not harder, but if you learn an auto here in the UK, you can't legally drive a manual, so people learn manual. Interesting. wonder why that's so different over there. Why, why are they so interested in manual versus automatic? It's not more economical. You can... Design the computers in automatics to be fairly efficient, or at least they shift at the right times. So it's not even really a economy thing, fuel economy thing. Um, that's interesting. I did not know that. I guess I'm not moving there because <laughs> then I'd have to drive a manual, or I'd have to learn to drive a manual. No, thank you. <laughs> Skyler's like, what rabbit hole is this stream going down? I love, I love going down the rabbit hole. If you fart in space, does it make a sound? No, because there's no air. Uh, in ten air, in ten years, all cars will be electric, assuming that things go well. No, that's not true. China will also dominate the U.S. market along with Tesla. No, because it still takes twenty to thirty years for all new cars to leave the global fleet, um, just because of how long they last. So as long as we're still selling gas cars, there's going to be a large portion of the of the car fleet that still runs on gas. Um, this is why I throw my air tags out the window at high speeds. Auto are nearly as economical as manual nowadays, but no, so long ago they were not. Oh, yeah, not, not so long ago they were not, yes. There used to be a time where driving manual was more fuel efficient, but yeah, that's not the case. Um, I ordered an Amazon smart plug for the Christmas lights. I'm so excited. Oh, congrats. I'm kind of more interested in the laser thing. You just plug in the front and it shines lights. That's probably a lot faster. With all the stuff we're seeing from SpaceX, Neuralink, etc., do you ever get depressed to know that we'll never live long enough to see what all this cool stuff will be far down the road? No, I'm actually quite excited. I I think there's a lot of scary stuff that I might not live to see. Um, I actually think probably one of the biggest technological dilemmas humanity might face when I'm nearing old age and I'm in my elderly years is, is the Neuralink stuff. Once you start building computers that enhance the human mind so substantially that um, people with Neuralinks can do far more than people without. I, th I could see that causing serious uh, political, education, legal issues, the, the amount of jobs it takes, the amount of opportunities um, people with Neuralinks will have. Um, that's something I'm kind of okay not being around for. I would, I would certainly be uh, more scared if I was a, if I was a kid and that was becoming the normal. If you, if you were like in elementary school or middle school and you were finding out that there's this big fight going on with 
Um, everybody who gets a Neuralink can do way more and can achieve way more than people without. So it's it's becoming this debate of uh, companies only wanting to hire, governments only wanting to hire people that have the chip, and certain people just being fundamentally against getting the chip in their brain because that's an invasion of privacy or invasion of control or you know they just don't want to have a surgical implant. If you were a kid watching that all unfold and you're not really sure what the future holds, I'd, I'd be kind of nervous. I'm I'm in the boat that Neuralink isn't going to creep up on us that quickly. It's it's mostly going to be about trying to fix um, neurological disorders first. So if you don't have neurological disorders, it's not going to be a big concern for a long time. Um, you'll probably I think before we have a long ways to go before Neuralinks are like a selling point where you can start using them as an average person and they actually just improve your life. It's not trying to fix anything. Um, that I think we've got probably another 30, 40, 50 years to go and I'll be pretty old. Um, I'll be in my 50s, 60s, 70s by the time that's all happening. And, and I'll have <laughs> my my working life, hopefully. I'll be putting money aside in investments and I won't really need to worry about work so I can just comfortably say, eh, I don't really, I, I don't need a Neuralink. I'm fine. I'll just die without one. And um, maybe if I have a neurological disease, I, I'll get one. But um, I don't know. I will, I'll definitely not be first in line. I'll wait until there's some more data to be done about it. But <laughs> um, I'm also excited to see what SpaceX has in store because they're, you know, rapidly developing the Starship rockets and the Starlink internet network is growing and expanding. And, and uh, we're likely... I think it's fairly likely we're going to see the first people walk on Mars in my lifetime, probably in the next 10 years or so. Um, if you're looking at how quickly they're iterating the, the Starship design and how they're trying to make rockets more reusable and how they want to, you know, it, SpaceX's whole mission is to make life multiplanetary. So I, I don't necessarily think I want to go to Mars, but I still think it'll be really exciting to watch others go and, and watch the colony grow and and watch the cost of space travel drop and what um, possibilities that allow for. Um, lunar tourism is a subject I'm really interested in because you're not too far away from Earth, so you can still have internet and and um, you can still keep in contact with people on Earth from the moon. Uh, you've got way lower gravity there. So if they built like a, a lunar base in my lifetime that you could you know pay a bunch of money to go stay there for a week or two, I, I could see myself doing that if it was if it existed and maybe in my elderly years, having the low gravity when my joints are old and I can't move around as much. And yeah, I, I'm excited for a lot of what could happen in my lifetime. I'm actually, yeah, I'm like more scared of what's going to happen after I go. <laughs> That's That stuff scares me. Um, but just technology improving, cars getting better, um, EVs getting cheaper, longer range. That whole transition is going to be really fun to watch. Um Tesla bots on Mars. Yeah, that'll be cool. I would love to see that. <laughs> Put those things on another planet where they can't hurt me. <laughs> I like that. Um, let's see. You look at the laser thing is easier, but I look at it as the lazy way out. Plus, I would like the way actual Christmas lights look. Yeah, it is the lazy way out. That's, that's what all engineering and math is. It's the lazy way of things. Cars were built because people didn't want to walk everywhere. You know, <laughs> wheels were invented because people were tired of walking. And uh, math was, math is the pursuit of laziness because people didn't want to count everything by hand. So instead they developed multiplication, division, so they didn't have to count all of these beans out. You know, it was much more complicated before math and it required much more work. But um, math saved time for the lazy. That's what, uh, <laughs> that's. That's what a lot of engineering and science does, is just make life easier. Um, I, know, I already think it's a little annoying with two pedals, knowing how well you can one pedal drive with a Tesla. I've never tried driving a manual, but from what I know and I've seen, like you said, it's just more work than I had to do before. Like people have said in the chat, some people just like having more control. They just like the way it feels. I, I have my brother-in-law and his brother, they love driving manuals, and, and they would actively look for a car with a manual if they were in the market for one. I'm just, I don't care how the car feels. I, I don't, I don't need that extra control. I want, I want to do less and less. Engineers work hard to be lazy themselves and the rest of humanity. <laughs> yeah. Pursuit of laziness. That's the key. How much will they cost though? What the Neuralink? Or are you talking about Tesla bot? 
Tesla bot cost is an interesting argument. They could they could um, sell them individually or they could rent them out and charge them at like a super low cost because they're not humans. But if they can do most manual labor jobs, you could say Tesla bot costs four dollars an hour. You're way cheaper than any human you could potentially hire. Plus, the human is going to require health benefits. The human's going to need sick days and, and pay, pay time off. And um, the, the human calls in sick every once in a while. If you rent a Tesla bot for $4 an hour, it can work theoretically uh, almost 24 hours a day. The battery might go out, but you can make that replaceable. You can you can drop the battery out and it swaps with another one and recharges the old one. And then when that battery runs out, it comes back. The old, old battery's fully charged and you just swap and it could just work for, for weeks and weeks at a time and you don't have to worry about pay time off and liability and health benefits and um, the the economics of a, a humanoid robot that could do a bunch of manual labor is insanely good. Would you want to be preserved in a stasis condition and brought back to life like cryogenic stasis? I don't think biologically. I'm okay with digitizing my personality into an AI that can talk for me in the future. That's fine. But preserving my body... I'm I'm I'd be paranoid that I'd be like awake and no one would know. I don't know. That would that would bother me more. I think I'd rather donate my body to science. They can take me apart and use me for something. Um you can have a they can have a college course on the the anatomy of a YouTuber. People can rip me open, see what they find. <laughs> I'm kind of weird, but I just want my uh I just want my body to be useful basically. As long as someone can find um some use out of it. Calculators save time for the super lazy. No, it's, it's, it's true, yeah. Uh, are there some things you miss from older phones you wish that were brought back? Not really. I really like my old phone, uh, my current phone. I guess 3D Touch was kind of nice. Um, but yeah, iOS kind of works without it now, so it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, I got to wrap up here in a second, but a, a tech video will drop shortly, but this will probably be the last question. We did this question, uh, discussion, uh, sorry, we did this discussion in college that we could get to the point where smart cars could be hacked and catch viruses, meaning we'll need to scan our cars before riding in them. Weird to think about. I think that's primarily why Tesla full self-driving software is aiming to all be done locally. I haven't seen any self-driving company where the goal is that the, each car is going to be controlled through a server and it needs an interconnect, internet connection to drive. All the Tesla FSD stuff can be done in the middle of the desert with no internet. So that will make it much harder to hack. Um, trains are better at some things, but not all things. If I want to move some stuff to a different house, or if I want to drive to the beach with my surfboards, or when I go mountain bike riding, the train's not going to do that very well. Um, that's why people buy pickup trucks, is because cars are used for more than transportation. Uh, would you want to implant your brain into a Tesla bot? Not biologically, maybe digitally. Um, anyway, I got to get going here, but I appreciate you all for your really, really interesting questions. I love it when we go down the rabbit hole. Tech video will be dropping. Um, you know what? Actually, I was going to drop it in a few minutes, but I should probably just drop it now. So you guys have something to watch as I wrap up here. Uh, assuming it's done processing. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Okay. So after that deep, deep talk about the future of tech and depression and joy, uh, we are now talking about iPhones again. <laughs> uh, make it full circle. So the link is in the chat if you want to watch it. Um, tech video is out now. Appreciate you all for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye-bye.